What's up, math fans? So you just saw my other video with the same title, Solving Radical Equations, um, but that video didn't say with quadratics. So basically in that video, I broke down the need to isolate the radical, isolate the radical, and then do the inverse of the uh, exponent, all right? So what I mean by that is, let's say you have the square root of x equals, I don't know, five, right? How do I get x alone is, well, you understand that the square root of x really means x to the one half power equals five. So the inverse of the exponent means if the exponent is one half, I'm gonna raise it to the second power and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. So that can cancels itself out and x is now equal to five squared is 25. So isolate the radical and then square both sides or whatever the inverse of that exponent is. So for these, it's gonna be to square both sides because these are both square root examples. Um, in that video, when you squared both sides, it was either a very simple answer like this or it led to a linear equation where you did additive inverse and maybe divide like a two-step equation. This video is about um, when it leads to a quadratic. So you already have the quadratic skills where you know how to factor and solve quadratic equations. Basically, I taught you different ways of factoring, like if you're looking at dots or looking for a GCF or using the sum product method. So we'll see which one we need today. So here, the radical is already isolated for you. If you want to see some examples where it's not isolated, check the other video, the one that just says solving radical equations without quadratics, and you'll see how to isolate the variable, um, the radical. So since it's already isolated, I'm ready for step two, which is to square both sides. So I'll do that just to make it obvious. I'm putting both sides in parentheses, although that's not necessary here. When I square a square root, the 56 minus x, that's the radicand, comes out and equals x squared. Now, what's a quadratic? It is um, an expression. In this case, it's going to be an equation where my variable is raised to the second power. The highest power is 2. Here is another variable raised to the first power, which is not, that, that doesn't change. It's still a quadratic. But now I need that quadratic in standard form. And if you remember standard form, of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I gotta make this look like that. So what I'm gonna do is bring everything from the left side to the right side. First, I'll add x. And if you're good enough in algebra, you can bring the 56 at the same time. Subtract 56, subtract 56. So what happens is this cancels and this cancels and it leaves you with zero on the left side and then everything else drops down because there's no like terms. So I can't combine anything, I just write what I see, and I see x squared plus x minus 56. So now I have a quadratic, basically in standard form. If the equal zero is here, or if the equal zero is here, it's the same thing. So now I'm going to factor this using what I call some product method, and it's still gonna be equal to zero. Now I'm just bringing it to this side, still equal to zero. So some product method means I need two numbers whose product is negative 56 and sum is this middle number which is positive 1. So you definitely need x and x and now I'm thinking 7 and 8, all right? The bigger number is going to get the middle sign so that's plus 8 and then minus 7. 8 times 7 is 56, 8 plus negative 7 is positive 1. So it works. I know I'm right and then I'm ready for my t-chart. If this times this equals zero, they call that the zero product property. Either the first expression is zero or the second expression is zero. So either x plus eight is zero or x minus seven equals zero. Now you're looking at one step equation and either x equals negative eight or x equals positive seven. Generally, when, especially when I first learned this, from here down, if I get two answers, I'm happy with both answers, and I usually say they're both correct, but you should, just to be sure, check your answer. And when you're dealing with radical equations, when I check my answer, uh, often is the case that one of them doesn't work. So let's see, I'm gonna go with negative eight first. So I'm gonna plug in negative eight here. So let's see, radical 56 minus negative eight. Does that equal, the original equation was equals x, right? So does that equal negative eight? Question, I'm not sure yet. So let's see, radical 56 minus negative eight is really 56 plus eight, which is 64. Does that equal negative eight? 
The square root of 64 is, if I discussed this in another video, if you don't see a sign out there, you can argue that it's positive or negative, but if you don't see the sign out there, it's implied that it's just the positive. So the square root of 64 is eight, and that does not equal negative eight. Sorry, you get rejected. They call that an extraneous root. I'm gonna just say reject, okay? Now I'm gonna go for seven, see if seven works. So again, square root of 56 minus seven, does that equal seven? Well, 56 minus seven is 49. Square root of 49, does that equal seven? Absolutely, seven equals seven. So I'm gonna keep it, and I know that that is my correct answer. All right, so be careful. Just because you get two solutions don't mean they both work. This one's extraneous. This one is the only one that actually works in the original equation. Next, is the radical isolated? Oh, no, it's not, so let's do it. I'm gonna bring my x over to the other side, and I got radical 2x minus seven equals five minus x. How do I get the radical out of there? I square both sides, and 2x minus seven drops down. Let me draw a line to separate. Um, equals five minus x squared. Do you know how many people just only square the five and square the x and stop? No, this is a FOIL question. Five minus x times five minus x. So, um, I'm gonna skip my work. I'm gonna skip a couple steps here. This is gonna give me 25 minus 10x plus x squared, all right? It came from first, outer, inner, last. It came from FOIL, four steps. I combined like terms to get negative 10 in the middle, all right? So, this is messy, but I'm gonna bring all my like terms to the one side, like I did over there. Uh, plus seven, plus seven, minus two x, minus two x. So now this is gone, this is gone. I got zero on the left side, and I'm gonna to try to get this in standard form. It's another quadratic. So x squared, I'm gonna write first. So I, had, I took care of this. Now, minus 10 and minus two is negative 12 x, and 25 plus seven is 32, positive 32. So now I'm ready for some product. Again, what times what is 32? It adds to negative 12. Um, I think they both have to be negative. So I got my x and my x, minus and minus, and I'm gonna go with eight times four, all right? Minus eight, minus four, negative eight times negative four is positive 32, and adds to negative 12, so I'm good. I'm gonna do my t-chart. And I'm gonna, if you show your work, you'll notice you get the opposite sign as your solution. So I'm gonna skip a couple steps. You're either gonna get eight or four. Both positive, so it's easy to check. Let's see, does eight work? Two times eight is 16. 16 minus seven is nine. What's the square root of nine? Three. Three plus the original x, which was eight. Three plus eight, is that equal to five? No, fail, sorry, no good. Let's try four. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 7 is 1, square root of 1 is still 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, this one works, I am good to go. So isolate, square, factor, solve, check. Thanks for watching, see ya.